hey guys hello everyone and welcome to the channel so i'm probably a little bit late in making this video uh i was busy with lot many things but then i decided that because this is such a big announcement and such a big change that it is important to update you on this channel because there are many students who are uh, like who have subscribed to this channel who are connected to me uh, regarding these updates so it is my responsibility even if it is a little bit late i should provide you with the information okay so here i am going to talk about the recent changes which ugc has bought in the way how they perceive csir net or any net exam ugc net or csir net exam and what are going to be the changes which you are going to see in the upcoming net exam so till now we have been giving csir net exam since lot many years and uh, there is no change in how the net exam was perceived the result contained two types of like qualified students one were those who were called as csir jrf or ugc jrf so those who have qualified jrf so these students were eligible to take admission into phd through interviews that's that was the first thing which they can do and the second thing was that they also get a fellowship during their phd okay so these were called as uh, jrf the second part of result was ls or uh, assistant professor uh, like someone who has qualified for lecturership or for assistant professor so these students were eligible for becoming assistant professor of course those who were jrf they were having this additional benefit that they are jrf along with this assistant professorship but these students of the second category they were just uh, ls qualified or they were just qualified for assistant professorship they can only apply as, as assistant professor and they cannot directly go and join phd based upon their ls score so if somebody asks you that what is the benefit of uh, getting ls so there is no short term benefit of that okay there was long term benefit that of course after completing phd or later on if you want to apply as a assistant professor you should have a ls score or you should have qualified ls that was the one of the benefit but there was no short term benefit or there was no motivation to qualify just ls okay and within last few years to be frank student Uh, they were not getting that much happy if they just qualify for ls they uh, target to qualify jrf that gives them ultimate happiness okay and yeah i understand because as i said just qualifying ls does not give just does not make you eligible for anything in the short term so now there are changes which has been done by ugc and this was actually updated on ugc website in uh, on 28th of march and they have decided or they have announced that now the csir result or any ugc or csir net exam the exam which they used to conduct joint csir ugc net exam now that exam will have result in three categories instead of two categories which was earlier jrf and uh, ls now you will be having three category result category 1 will remain same uh, that means you will be jrf plus assistant professorship category 2 will be like for assistant professorship but the third category they have bought is for phd admission and now the first category the, the one who has qualified for jrf he will be getting three benefits actually first benefit he will be jrf qualified he will be getting a fellowship throughout his phd second benefit he will be eligible for assistant professor and the third benefit is that uh, of course like he can apply for phd interview directly of course jrf was making him eligible for that right so the first category student was already eligible to apply as a phd scholar in universities just he has to give a interview and join as phd so nothing has much changed for category 1 student but category 2 and category 3 has been changed okay so in category 2 those who will fall in category 2 they will be eligible to apply as as assistant professor and the second thing will be that they will be also eligible to apply for phd admission so if you know uh, in the last uh, or from many years actually universities okay universities means those places which are approved by ugc like du bhu okay all these are universities hcu uh, amu all these are universities okay so they used to conduct their own entrance exams for phd uh, like bhu has its own exam called ret ret research entrance test du has its own entrance exam for phd so all these universities used to conduct their individual entrance exams for phd admission even there was a cu exam like a combined universities exam also for phd admission so now uh, ugc has decided that 
these exams are no longer going to be conducted like universities don't have to conduct their individual entrance exam because see for a student it was very difficult he has to give csr net and then if let's say he is not qualified jrf he want to take admission into phd uh, he has to you know apply for different universities separately but now ugc has bought everything under a same umbrella and now you have if you have if you have qualified under the category 2 you are now eligible to apply for phd in the, all these universities so these universities are not going to conduct their individual marks or their uh, sorry individual uh, exams but just your net score card is going to be enough if you have qualified under category 2 and category 3 in that case you will be eligible to apply for this of course category 2 students will be like eligible for assistant professorship and for phd admission both and category 3 will be the one which is newly ad added category and these will be the students who will be just eligible to apply as as, uh, as a phd student or just for phd admission they won't be eligible for assistant professorship let me tell you a few more things that earlier also for jrf there was a timeline of three years that used to be like if you if you have qualified jrf that is category one you have to get admission into a institute within three years of qualifying and if you get that then you uh, your fellowship can be initiated and other things can be done uh, whereas there was a lifelong uh, eligibility or you can say you become eligible for assistant professor professorship for lifelong there was no deadline for that okay uh, same thing remains here also if you qualify under category 2 or category 1 in both the cases you will be eligible to apply as assistant professor throughout your life there is no deadline for that but they have applied a uh, time duration of one year to apply for phd admission so category 2 and category 3 students those who want to take admission into phd they have to take admission within one year of getting the result so i'm going to show you the detailed notice the detailed uh, notice and we are going to talk about each and everything in detail over there i have just given you an overview of it and now let's look upon my computer screen and let's read about the the whole public notice notice what exactly it says okay so this is the public notice which i was telling you about and this was as i said it was announced on 28th of march it says national eligibility test as an entrance test for admission to phd the the title itself is self-explanatory there are few things mentioned over here that why it is being done this is coming under the new national education policy and this is going to be eligible or this is going to be applicable from 27th of march onwards that means the next csr net or the next net exam is going to have or that is going to implement this these all points okay so you can read about this i will give you a link to download this particular pdf in the description of this video you can come and download this notice yourself let me come down and talk about the important things for which you are here so as i was telling you it says that from june 2024 onwards therefore the net candidates will be declared eligible in three categories as i was telling you so there is category one category one is the one who is eligible for ad admission to phd with jrf okay that uh, like earlier also they used to be and they will be also eligible to become appointed as assistant professor okay so they are uh, having the same benefits these are category one they can take admission into phd with jrf that means with the fellowship and also they become eligible for assistant professorship there is then category 2 okay category 2 students are going to be eligible for admission to phd without jrf so they are not they can take the admission to phd but they will not be getting the fellowship which a jrf is getting okay which is um, like which the jrf revised fellowship is so these students are not going to get that fellowship but they can take admission to phd and they can also be appointed as assistant professor now understand that uh, like the fellowship amount is not mentioned over here okay every university used to give you a very minimal amount of fellowship if you don't have a jrf that as far as what i know till now was 8000 rupees per month there is no mention about whether that amount is increased or something like that there is no mention about it i am just hoping i am just hopeful that that amount should also be increased because nowadays in 2024 8000 rupees for a research scholar to carry out his research and you know 8000 is not sufficient so it should be increased and we just hope that it increases so yeah uh, you become eligible to go or take admission in phd but without jrf okay with that minimal amount of fellowship which i am telling you 
and then there is category 3 which i was telling you that is eligible for admission to phd program only and not for award award of jrf or appointed as pro assistant professor so category 3 is only those who just want to take admission in phd they will not be awarded as jrf they will not be eligible for assistant professor so now from now on we will be having three results okay so uh, this has been again summarized in our table form so category one award of grf will be given and app appointed assistant professor so what you are eligible for if you qualify in category one you become eligible for all the three you become eligible to to get the grf amount you get eligible to apply as assistant professor and you can also take admission into phd program if you qualify under category two so you are not eligible to become grf or to get that grf amount fellowship but you you are eligible to get assistant professor or apply as assistant professor and also you can take admission into phd and then there is category three for which you are neither qualified as grf you can neither apply as assistant professor but you can take admission into phd the only benefit of these changes is that all these universities which were conducting their individual exams are now going to have a centralized system a, cent a single exam which is going to be the one which is going to decide that whether you will get admission or not so now there is one more thing in like which they have mentioned that how the admission process is going to go so it says that for students who qualify in category 2 and category 3 and want to take admission in phd 70 percent weightage will be given for the test score that means for the net score the net marks which you will get and 30 percent weightage for the interview for the admission to phd program understand that in india or anywhere in the world when you take admission for phd you have to go through uh, interview without interview phd admissions are not done so that's why this 30 percent marks will be given based upon your interview performance and 70 percent weightage based upon uh, your net score okay the phd admission will be based on the combined merit of the net marks and the marks obtained in the interview viva okay so i hope this is clear to you that what changes you are going to see from the next csir and it says that the notification and the bulletin information for the net june 2024 will be issued by the national testing agency shortly so nt is shortly going to announce the information about net june 2024 ugc net csr net all those notifications are going to come very soon that's what they have mentioned over over here but uh, the prime idea of making this video was to make you aware about that what are the things you are going to see do let me know what are your thoughts about it uh, what do you perceive from it is it good is it for good is it for not good from my perspective if you ask i will just say that the only benefit which i can see is uh, that you will be having a single exam to apply under various universities but again doing phd without fellowship is something which is not actually which anyone is not going to suggest you because uh, when you join as a phd i have like discussed about this in many of my videos because i have done phd i know that uh, what kind of you know uh, what kind of pressure you go through not only academic pressure of course you are doing phd you are doing research so you are going to go through that but there is financial pressure there is like you if you have a family you have to support the family and you are at a certain age where you need money okay money you need to support the things around you and without fellowship it becomes difficult so i just hope that uh, ugc also increases the minimal fellowship or the non jrf fellowship that's what we call it so it should increase non jrf or non net fellowship it should increase the amount for that uh, at least it should be around 20000 or plus because at least should be half of jrf right because uh, someone who is doing phd along with jrf although they have not qualified the exam but still they are working in the lab equally so that's what my personal opinion is do let me know what you guys think about it i'll i'll try to make a separate video about it i just want to rant about all these things but yeah that's that's some for some other video that's all from my side for this particular video i will see you guys in the next one till then have a great day bye bye take care and do let me know your opinion in the comment section below take care bye bye